today we are talking using Notion for your small business. <laughs> The sun just started coming out as I started to film this. Today we are talking using Notion for your small business. I have been a Notion girly since 2020 or 2021. So anyways, uh, you don't care about that. I have been using Notion day in and day out for years and it started off as using it for my job and then I realized how amazing this was and I started using it for my business and then I started using it for my personal life once I got this house. I I wanted to organize all of my thoughts on like the house projects and prioritize things by like importance what needs to be done before we move in and all that stuff so I started using it for personal I wanted to make a video on how you can use it for your business it's very overwhelming to get started with there's so many ways to organize your information and display it in the way that works well for you what I've learned for myself is that depending on the task or the like section of work so like for example when it comes to YouTube I only like seeing that in a calendar view but when it comes to my blog I like seeing that in like a Kanban like Trello type of like the boards where they are listed out but also I like seeing it in the list and calendar so like each type of content I like to see differently I like that that's super possible with Notion to be able to just change things up and have things exactly how you want it to be Notion templates are a great way to learn how you can organize information but really what it comes down to is just playing around with Notion and figuring out what works best for you. There are periods of time where I need to have the structured to-do list that is in my main database but there are other times when I need just like a simple list and I don't want to be over here in this big database so I just use a, a simple template and it works well. I like that I can just change up how I'm doing things depending on my mood. So it's perfect if you have ADHD, but it's also perfect if you're just running a business and you don't have ADHD. Here is my OKR template and I wanted to show you how to use this template. So first off, you are going to fill out your objectives. So this could be something like get monetized on YouTube, if I can spell this right. And then you can change the icons to whatever you want. That's all you need to do for right now. Then you're going to come down to your key results and you're going to start filling in the steps that it takes to get to those objectives. So let's start with the first one, getting monetized on YouTube. So this part kind of depends on how you want to track things. Do you want to track it monthly or quarterly? For me, I like tracking things quarterly just so it's less upkeep. But if you'd prefer to track it monthly, you can definitely change these to January, February, etc. And then change this to say month but let's just say I'm going to do it quarterly I think one of the key results would be 12 YouTube videos in quarter one and then this would be quarter one and then the current would be zero and the target would be 12 so the goal is to get to 12 videos I currently have zero and then in this column you're going to link to the objective and the objective for this is getting monetized on YouTube so I'm just going to copy that and paste it to all of those. And so now let's change this to, let's say I've done five videos. You can see that for this key result, it's 42% completed. And overall for this goal, it's 10% because it's adding up all of this. So really you're five out of 48 videos for this goal. Now let's add things like maybe um, have 4,000 watch hours. Maybe we're at 300, oops, out of 4,000. And I'm gonna have this be all quarters. And then we're gonna link that to getting monetized on YouTube. How about have 1,000 followers or subscribers? 500 out of 1,000, we're halfway there. This is also gonna be a yearly goal, like, a goal for the entire year and we also need to link that to getting monetized you can see this just updated to 17 percent so essentially this is all you need to do for your OKR template what you can then do like on your home page your dashboard you can then do um, like you can say goals and link to a template and we're gonna link to the key results template and we're gonna uh, just do default view and we're gonna filter it to quarter one 
So then you're only seeing the goals for quarter one or that have quarter one in it and not all the things. So like pretend you're on a different page right here. This is all you would be seeing and then you'd be able to update it right on your homepage or you can just have a page like this and not worry about having it linked to somewhere else. So that is an option as well. So if you want to copy the progress bar formula, this is what it is. Basically, let's see. You have to have a progress uh, property. Basically, yeah, just make sure you change this progress property to whatever your property is. Let me show that to you. And progress, the formula for that is just the current value divided by the target value displayed as a percentage. So current divided by this, and that's that. And then I have this one hidden because I don't really need that but it's still using that for the progress bar. Basically just taking that number and making it into a progress bar instead of showing it as a percentage is all that's really doing. You don't need that, but it's fun. I did target minus current so that I would always know like how close I am to something. This is a relation property. Property type is relation. It's related to the objectives database and then I'm having it show on the objectives and then it's related to the key results. So another way I use Notion for my business planning is for the content hub. I have this in a lot of different views and ways. I'd much rather things be overly complicated so that I can have everything linked together. So here's my overall content calendar. It looks chaotic and that's probably because it is, but I got a lot of things going on. So every Monday I am posting a YouTube video and on Friday, these are kind of my extra bonus videos, whatever I feel like doing. Sometimes a vlog, sometimes a quick tip video, which is like a two minute video. So everything in this view is filtered to YouTube or YouTube short, which is why these ones are showing, but I think I might just change that back to just showing YouTube, just so it's easier. But then what I'm doing is, so Monday my YouTube video goes out, on Tuesday my tips and trends email goes out, and I'm using the tip from this video in this email, and then I'm also posting it in my Facebook group and on Instagram. So this content gets reused three times on this day, which is super helpful. Or if it's not really something like updated file organization isn't really something that I felt like sharing in an Instagram post. So what I did that day was I used the trend from my tips and trends email and made some doodles for the graphic for Instagram. So that's how I used it that way. So I'll show you what I mean. So I drew these little Western icons and posted that with a caption about my tips and trends and you know, all that good stuff. So Mondays are figured out, Tuesdays are figured out, Wednesdays are kind of like a free for all and Thursdays I'm trying to do like a trend video. So like one trendy thing a week and then Fridays are kind of like whatever I feel like doing. That goes for Instagram and YouTube. So I have all these different views for what I'm doing. It just helps me because usually for me, I'm not someone who wants to work on a bunch of different content. I want to work on one channel at a time. So I did both of these emails in the same day instead of doing this email and this YouTube video and this. I like to kind of stay in one area and then work ahead and kind of work that way. Prior to having each channel have a separate page, I just had all my content on one page. It's kind of a little clunky to have to switch between pages versus is just tabs right here. In my TikTok and Instagram page, I got the main calendar with everything. And then I have, this, these are like ones I've already done but never posted or gave a date to. And then Instagram, TikTok, uh, what is this one? The same thing. I don't know why I have it twice. And then here's a gallery view. So I like having the gallery view just because I like to visualize what things are looking like. And then if I just have some designs in here like you can see these three are all on the 17th obviously i'm not posting three things on one day but these are just there as placeholders kind of to see if they align with anything i've already made or if they align with any of my tips then i don't forget about them and they don't just stay in procreate and i just lose them and never post them which definitely happens a lot I have an email thing which basically just shows the segment and the status. This one's very simple. And I have my blog which has the status which I really like this view for blogs. So it's funny how like every channel it kind of likes something different but I think that's why Notion works so well because you can just view things in so many different ways.
But overall, I do like having everything in separate tabs like this so I can quickly filter between things, but it is nice to be able to open up designated areas. I'm feeling overwhelmed with all of those other databases. It's good to come back to it, just an easy to-do list, and that's what I have going on right here. And you can make buttons for things that you do each day. I haven't used this at all this year, but I was using it a lot towards the end of last year. I go through phases of what is working for me and right now like using my databases like I should is working for me but sometimes it just doesn't cut it. I also have a monthly goals database which I, I do really like this one because you can create drop downs and things that go within each other and it's just a little bit simpler than having all those databases and sometimes that's what my brain needs and it has cute little graphics right there but yeah this is just a basic little basic little uh, to-do list. Oh, my designs to make. So here is my designs I want to make type of ideas. And some of these are trends that came from Pinterest. Some of these are things that I've thought of, things that I'm seeing that or that I'm enjoying. I just add things in here and I will add quotes. I will add colors. I will add like, let's see. Here's kind of how Pinterest described this one. Um, Western Gothic. Here's how they described that. So I have all of these kind of just with the quick information that Pinterest gave it. When I was heavy into using Notion for my digital designs, I was using it for everything. So I had this digital designs dashboard and this one kind of showed the status of everything I was making. These were ideas, things that I was in progress of designing, mocking up, ready for listing, ready for making pin graphics if they've been put on Tailwind, which I don't even use anymore, and if they've been done. Anything that was tagged listing goes into here and it also has sub tags for if it needs to be added to my website, Etsy, Creative Fabric Out Market, etc. Yeah, this is overly complicated, but it really worked well. I just don't care enough to upload to all those other sites anymore to need something like this. So I had a database for digital designs. I would also sometimes share things to different Facebook groups and I would mark it off once they were done because I would forget which group I've shared to and I didn't want to like bombard every single group and share it all at once. This was how I was keeping track of that. I also have it in a, in a view like this where I can just come down and check off the list which I found this to be super helpful. Um, I don't use any of this anymore but this is a good way to organize things if you are sharing in multiple groups. I also had that same content filtered by website so these were all things that were ready to list. Uh, just without having to go through that other view. Just everything was listed out. But what I did was I took it a step further. So not every listing had a type. So now I have it filtered by things that are ready to upload, filtered by each website and then what type. So then I could work on certain things at a time instead of, you know, being all over the place. So if you're a digital designer, these were uh, super helpful dashboards to have. I just don't keep up with them anymore because I'm not as heavy into digital designing and uploading, mass uploading anymore. This is editing Jordan here to close out the video because I totally forgot about that. Um, oh, okay, I just got a text that I needed. I think I rambled a little bit too much in this video. I don't know if this video ended up being helpful. I hope it was. I love Notion so much. I have so many databases and it was kind of hard to show everything without going super detailed into every single one. So if you have any questions at all, let me know and I can point you in the right direction. I will have links to any of the templates that I have available down below, as well as if any of them are free to download, there will be a sign up for that. But yeah, if you're not using Notion for your business, I highly recommend it and just get started doing what you think you need and then it's gonna keep evolving. I promise it doesn't have to be perfect from the beginning. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.